Hey there, folks. Uh, my name is Shook, and I'm going to be playing a little adventure game, a point-and-click adventure game uh, called Breakdown. As you can see, right there. Uh, this game was uh, made by, uh, made with the uh, Adventure Game Studio program, a program which lets you make your own point-and-click adventure games. Pretty nifty stuff. I've messed with it before. Back several, several years ago, made my own little crappy game. <laughs> very, very basic. No ending, except you clicked on it. There was a cup, a cup you could click on, and it would end the game. <laughs> Not on purpose, though. But, uh, yeah. I did one uh, game called uh, Barn Runner that was done with the same program. I'm going to do several of these, you know. They, there's not been any Let's Plays done on them. There's some pretty good games, you know, on it, so why not? Uh, I am going to leave a, put a, uh, the uh, link in the uh, description to where you can get this game. It's completely free. Uh, this one is a short one. I'm, this playlist that I'm going to be uh, doing this on. As I really like to arrange stuff in playlists, uh, will be called short AGS games, meaning they will be short, one, one hit, one episode games. Uh, this probably will only take 20 to 30 minutes to play through. I hope um, shouldn't be more than an hour, so I can handle that. So this is a science fiction-y type game, it's supposed to be comedic. Let's uh let's get the show on the road. <coughs> Captain, we're getting a transmission from the engineering department. Put it on the TV. Captain, sir, we're all ready to go now. Excellent. We can start our daring mission to boldly go where other ships have already been and make sure it's still all right. The autopilot ready on your signal. Autopilot pilot disconnects that useless contraption. I'll fly the ship myself. Sir, uh, with all due respect, come on. I've just finished a twelve hour service. I'm the captain, aren't I? I can fly this thing and plug that autopilot. Alright. But if anything happens to my ship, I mean to my engine. Relax. Sir, collection of world directives state that all faster than light travel must be done by autopilots. If there's one thing our games of battleship should have taught you, it's that I don't follow the rules. Okay, Captain, the autopilot's disengaged. Great! Oh, there is sound effects. I was thinking. <laughs> I think it's a bit solid. Sounds like everything is functioning as normal, don't it? <laughs> what have you done? Oh, that's right, I need to click. Ah, uh, maybe we better have that uh, autopilot back again. That's it. I quit. If you want the engine fixed, do it yourself. He didn't look very happy. Well, this isn't very good. I don't know anything about fixing engines. Maybe we could send one of uh, the ensigns, sir. Excellent idea, first mate. Send for one to take a look. I'm late for my hairdresser's appointment. Listen up, Benson. This is an order from the captain. The ship is experiencing engine trouble and we're currently stranded. We need you to head down to the engine room and re-engage the autopilot. You might need to do a few repairs on the engine as well. Well, get going. Oh, great. He has a red shirt on. It's not good. <laughs> I 
That's not good. Okay, yeah. Just point and click, and that's where he goes. Oh. Well, I don't know what this does. Uh, You have to scan objects with the handbook, or not the other way around. Okay, so there's not the, uh... Your one regulation poster shows some primitive adventure game you once played. I can't tell what that says. You think about taking the poster with you, but decide it looks better on the wall. Okay. Right click. Makes you look at it, and left click makes you try to interact with it. You haven't done anything you need to wash your hands of yet. <laughs> the sink's plug was lost long ago, but fortunately a clump of hair prevents water from draining away too quickly. The mirror automatically magnifies and filters your reflection, converting your sharply defined features into a pleasing blur. While the cabinet behind the mirror may have once held your essence, Years of toothpaste fights have gummed it permanently shut. Sign warns of the potential hazards of sharing your local personnel relo relocator. You remember a particular gruesome training video on the same subject. The local personnel relocator controls look complicated until you realize that most of the buttons are just painted on. The wardrobe would contain your uniform, except you're currently wearing it. You have no idea what's in this cupboard. In the world of shared sleeping quarters, the top bunk is the most prized possession. You feel the envy rise within you. This is your bunk. Those few square feet are your retreat from the world. The mattress is old and marked with some dubious stains. This is your roommate's bunk. It smells faintly of cabbage. Your mattress is all that's left of your bedding. You briefly wonder where your Star Wars duvet is, before de deciding it must be wash day. Oh, I need to look at the ladder. You pull back your roommate's mattress. The mattress appears to have been hiding an old video cassette labeled Big and Bouncy. Volume 3. You quickly stuff the videotape into your uniform. Big and bouncy. I don't know what they're talking about. I don't know. <laughs> Mattresses are well known for gr as great hiding places for illicit materials and large amounts of cash. Unfortunately, you have neither. The ladder allows access to the top two bunks in the cupboard. Oops. Upon closer inspection, the cupboard seems to be secured with some kind of remote locking device. Completely and utterly empty. The local personnel relocator allows you to travel to all authorized locations in the shield. When it works. Oh, we can even look at the light. That's cool. This appears to be the only light source in the entire room. Try as you might, you can't seem to find the light switch. You can't reach the light. Okay, it's... Let's see if I can... Okay, cool. Oh, that's where I'm already at. Oh wait, no. Okay, that probably was where you was. Yeah, there. It is. Brody, the ship's cat, stares hungrily at you. <laughs> awesome sound effects.
You politely suggest that Brady move from in front of the cupboard. He growls in response. Unfortunately, the ship's cat has chosen a spot immediately in front of the cupboard to sit and doesn't want to move. How ironic. The view screen displays the infinite universe around the ship in full super high definition. The result is mind-blowingly like a bunch of white dots on a black background. <laughs> Captain Big Brow. Captain Big Brow sits musing to himself while he has his hair done. Oops. Ensign Evans. Ensign Sharon Evans is the captain's unofficial hairdresser and has approached the job with all the ingenuity and resourcefulness of an adventure game character. You admire the effort someone went to in order to add extra sleeves to the first mate's uniform, but can't feel it draws attention to the lack of trousers. <laughs> Very true. Hey, squids don't need trousers. It's probably not a good idea to bother the captain until you finish your mission. You probably shouldn't bother Evans while she's on duty. Well, haven't you fixed it yet? Re-engage the autopilot and make ne any necessary repairs to the engines. Chop chop. I found this under my roommate, so... <laughs> you decide not to give the video cassette to the captain in case he confiscates it. Do you want this? Employee handbook. Oh, that's cool. The ship's captain is the single most important member of a ship's crew. Not only do they have to oversee the daily workings of the ship, they are also called to tread the thin line between investigation and destruction should they discover anything new to COW. If the captain is captured, the rest of the crew must immediately sacrifice their lives to get them back. See also loyalty, a path to promotion. Captain Jonah Bigbrow has been with the Collection of Worlds for two years and is known for his can-do attitude and disapproval of authority. The Ensign, or Lackey as they are commonly known amongst the officers, is the lowest rank in the Collection of the World Space Corps. Normal duties consist of menial work around the ship where, wherever an extra hand is needed. Although they often provide a good distraction to enemy troops on ground in missions, the average lifespan of instance on tours of duty is about two weeks. <laughs> Red shirt. At first glance, Sharon Evans appears to be just another instance, but she has demonstrated her ingenuity in her recent assignment as a captain's hairdresser by actually finding something to do. She has reasonable promotional prospects. The first mate is one of the few crew members who can question the captain's decisions. Because of this, the chosen first mates are usually logical, intelligent, and have a fear of public speaking. <laughs> first mate Ethel Green has worked under Captain Big Brow for the past two years and is considered a trusted advisor to the latter. As a second year physics degree dropout, Green is actually one of the most qualified crew members. Can you use this on that, all the stuff? Oh, cool. It, it does work. Wow. There's a lot of stuff in this game. That's cool. The view screen usually displays the view in front of the ship or any incoming transmissions, but it can also be tuned to local television channels or can be used as part of an in flight entertainment system. The controls are located next to the steering on the main control desk. <laughs> up your computer to it, is that what it's saying? The concept, the concept of Ship's Cat was first introduced by Cat, Captain Arthur, who took to keeping several felines aboard his vessel to act as emergency rations. This practice was ended by Cal legislations almost ten years ago, but many ships still keep cats as companions. Brody is young at three years, but his part in last year's Great Rat Invasion earned him a promotion. 
He now ranks higher than the ensign. That's you, ain't it? <laughs> the local personnel relocator has now all but replaced doors and stairs as ways to get to rooms. It is often much quicker. It's capable of checking whether users are allowed to access a certain room. It eliminates the need for space-consuming corridors. However, the LPR should not be used without first attending a mandatory safety lecture, as improper use can lead to several severe physical conditions. See also, what to do if you have somebody else's arm. Guess it all depends on whose arm you have. If it's like a uh, rift and you can punch somebody's face off with it, I suggest you keep it. Why wouldn't you keep it? Let's go back to his quarters. Oh, that was weird. Was that supposed to happen? Crew members are allowed to personalize their rooms with up to one poster each because of restrictions on the content of the poster. Most of them are poorly at disguised adverts. <laughs> Wardrobes traditionally contain hung clothing items. Each crew member has access to a wardrobe to store their uniform in. This springy mattress provides comfort for the well-known provides comfort for the sleeper. Strangely, even though it is a well-known fact that mattresses are used as hiding places for illicit materials, mattresses are used. Okay. Strangely, even though it is a well-known fact that mattresses are used as hiding places for illicit materials, mattresses are used as hiding places for illicit materials. Okay, it took me a minute to realize what he was trying to say. <laughs> but he's going to about lighter. <laughs> I get definitions for everything. That's cool. This ancient device allows users to ascend or descend in a vertical space, taking up much less room than in its forerunner, the stairs. It is still used in areas where LPRs are too big to be of use. <laughs> yeah, beam me into this bunk. That bunk. The light provides illumination for crew members in this room. There is a theory that the light switches off when the room is empty, but nobody has been able to confirm this. I'll be the first to confirm it. All sleeping quarters are provided with a sink to facilitate washing. All other uses strictly pro pro prohibited, even in the middle of the night. The mirror is one of the new range of smart mirrors, which follow the principle of confidence is everything. As such, they are able to digitally remaster the majority of faces and do a realistic but better looking version. A known bug can cause a mirror to freeze up or stop reflecting when it sees more extreme faces. Wow. This sign is intended to warn users of the local personnel re relocator about the dangers of sharing the device. Failure to follow this warning can result in swapped limbs, minds, or memories. This appears to be a home recorded video cassette. The contents are unknown. Credits are the cow standard currency. This note is worth five credits. Okay. We know that that is something we can do, so let's keep doing that. Uh. <laughs> Engineer Norman is pacing up and down in an angry fashion. It is probably not a good idea to bother him. Super day. Hmm. The sign is too high for you to reach. The console is powered up, but aside from a large crack, you can't see anything on the screen. You pull at the panel, it seems a bit loose, but you can't quite manage to pry it open. The broken console has an access panel on the side. 
This looks like a broken arcade machine from one of the recreation rooms. Do you guess it's been brought here for Engineer Norman to fix? This is one of the vending machines that provide pr processed meals for the lower crew ranks. Engineer Norman is... Oh. Pacing up and down and angrily muttering something about strikes. I'm going on strike. Well, let's go ahead and do this first. One of the more popular furnishings of the ship recreation rooms, arcade machines can spark friendly rivalries as crew members compete to enter expletives into high score tables. This machine appears to be broken and should be reported to the ship's engineer. Hey, get to work on it. The vending machine provides hot, healthy, and sometimes edible meals to hungry crew members. Although the highest ranks have their own dining rooms, the vending machines are technically open to anybody. They are mainly operated by heat sink sensitive touch screens, though many have had keyboards retrofitted to allow cold blooded species to use them. The ship's engineer is tasked with keeping the entire electrical side of the ship running smoothly while also tackling any day-to-day -day repairs. Hal Broomy Norman is a very experienced engineer and valued member of the ship's crew. He holds the current Cal record for the fastest repair of a malfunctioning holodeck. <laughs> Oi! Get out of here! That room's off limits! Yeah, had to like bribe him. Then engineer earns about ten times as much as you. You doubt five credits would persuade him to do anything. The engineer is known to be a very moral and upstanding man. Also, you don't think he has a VCR. Okay. Well, I'm stuck, people. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Hmm. Ah. Oh. You feed your hard-earned money into the vending machine. Okay. The vending machine drops a bowl into the delivery slot, slashing hot soup all over you. You take the bowl of soup. The vending machine seems to have given you a free cheese biscuit to go with it. The soup looks as if someone has already eaten it. You decide you're not feeling hungry. You see what you can only assume is a piece of cheese, sat on a cardboard like cracker. However, with the telltale holes, it's impossible to be sure. This is one of the food items ordered from the ship's vending machines. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Excuse me, folks. So, can we use the soup on the cat? I believe we can probably use the soup on the cat. Brody sniffs at the bowl of soup carefully, then turns his nose up. Captain, you want some soup? The captain has a private dining room. He wouldn't be interested in vending machine room. Food. Evans looks busy. You don't decide not to bother. The first mate's eyes eye rolls in disgust. You place the hunk of cheese on the ground. Oh yeah. You carefully open the cupboard. You push several buttons on the VCR, but nothing seems to happen. Oh no. Oh no, no, no. Are we going to have to do what I think we're going to have to do? Oh no. You slide big and bouncy volume 3 into the VCR.
You decide to leave the video where it is. Oh, that's the When installed as the obsolete piece of hardware, VCRs are, were readopted as an in flight entertainment system when it was discovered that faster than light travel caused lasting damage to optical storage devices such as DVDs. That's a fascinating thought. Hmm. Anything I can do? Hmm. Well, dang it. What am I supposed to do here? Okay, well, there's a bowl of soup, so... Hmm. Can I give the bowl of soup to, uh... This guy? Oh. The engineer looks more angry than hungry. You doubt he'd be... Huh. Somewhere under the floor is the pressure sensor that opens the engine... You remember a game you once played with some other instance where everybody had to place objects on a floor sensor and the person who made the door open was the loser. Unfortunately, you have more important th things to be doing at the moment. This is a pressure sensor built into the floor automatically opening a door when somebody steps on it. Oh. So I can't sneak it into there? That gummit. Can I, pour this, can I put the soup on the console? It seems unlikely that pouring the bowl of soup into the console will make it function any better. Right on the panel. Hang it. According to the text written on it, this automatic door provides access to the engine room. You will need to get into the engine room, so messing around with a working door probably isn't the best idea. Hmm. Well, oh, crap. What do I do? Oh, no. Let's go back to his end. Let's go back to the quarters. To the quarters, I say. To the quarters. <laughs> Can you... <clears throat> oh, okay. You syrup, syrup, syruptitiously pour the soup down the sink, then replace it with water from the taps. <coughs> uh, excuse me, people. <clears throat> um, in the process of holding the bowl of water up to the mirror, you discover that you can see the other side of it by turning it over. Huh? <laughs> my mattress. I mean, my roommate. Oh. <laughs> you try very hard, but you can't come up with a way to open the cupboard with a bowl of water. You 
You think about taking the poster with you, but decide it looks better on the wall. Okay, well, we have water now. What does this do? The VCR is, ha has to be an important thing, so. You're not sure if anybody noticed you breaking the door, but attempting to repair now is an obvious admission of guilt. You just said to leave the door alone for the moment. He's kind of a squid, is he? <clears throat> Man, my voice broke bad, didn't it? <laughs> Can I put it in the... You briefly consider teleporting the bowl of water to a random location in the ship, but then you remember you have important work to do. Hmm. Oh, wait a second. Um, B is a darker green. Hmm. Both of them are red. Hmm. I don't know what that does. No good. Hmm. You doubt he'd be interested in that. What do I do here? What do I do? You know what? It's still going to go in the short video game category, but I think I'm going to go ahead and end it here. Let's save this, make sure I can save it okay. Alright. And uh, I'm going to complete this next time. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'm um, remembering right now to leave a link. To put a link in the description, so uh, farewell for now, folks. Bye.